Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Carpo's Reality. I was thinking a lot this morning. Go figure, right? <laughs> uh, it's early. I got up early this morning, and whenever I do, I kind of have my own alone time, and I tend to think about things. It seems like morning is the time when I think about the reality of life versus idealism. And uh, the situations that we encounter in life that really test our test our resources, our inner resources. And um, the one I want to talk about in particular today is, um, I guess, spiritual beliefs, not religious beliefs. Spirituality is a more open-ended subject. It allows one to say, well, it could be like this or it could be like this, whereas religion says this is the way it is. So I'm not comparing the two. I'm saying this particular subject matter is about ideas of moving into other realms or other bodies or becoming something. Um, let's just start off by how this started. I, uh, I subscribe to a guy named uh, Gabriel Kundalini, and I find his videos very, it's very, um, well, let's, I watch them, let's put it that way. I don't watch a whole lot of videos, but I watch his videos. Um, I really don't spend a lot of time on YouTube other than dealing with my channel, really, and I try to watch other people's stuff as much as possible, but uh, um, I don't watch a lot of TV. So, this guy's videos are very interesting, they're very deep, and very insightful into life, spirituality, men and women, and now, I like the guy a lot. There's a degree of it that is very, um, how do I put it respectfully? Because um, I mean this as nice as possible. Drawing conclusions, I guess, on a lot of subjects because we kind of have to. In, in the sense that people want answers, and so they ask a question, let's say, and, and if you tell a person, well, I don't know, you know, they don't want to hear that. And Gabriel sells books and whatnot, and spirituality, you know, he does, uh, I'm not sure if he does classes or what his deal is, but the thing is, he has um, almost an obligation to people to answer their questions and to, um, because he's presenting himself as if he understands these things, or at least to an extent. I mean that totally respectfully. Um, I'm trying to make draw a comparison to some of these people who don't have any life experience, who haven't gone and tried anything, who don't understand, uh, you know, Kundalini or any type of um, you know yogic movement or um, you know the the chi system of the body, all these different uh, beliefs. <clears throat> and I, I put new age on it, but what I really mean is old age revisited, because that's all this is. It's, it's finding yourself as the, at the center, and realizing that you have more capacity and more power than you, than we give ourselves quite often. But um, the question is always what is real, and how do we know who's telling us the truth? So the question that was posed today, I had mentioned a comment the other day about he was talking about emotions and it really got me thinking about this um, because this I, I love hearing people's points on certain things and being able to say oh hi I never thought about that he was talking about um, anger sadness all of these emotions that we have as being a natural part of being a human and how when we try to deny these emotions then we're only denying ourselves but also at the same time knowing we have to have a degree of control over our emotions you know you can't just get angry angry about everything it's okay to be angry, but learning how to control your anger is not a bad thing. Uh, but the question came up of what happens in the afterlife, you know, and, and I asked him, I said, uh, well, if anger is such an important emotion, and sadness is such an important emotion to learn on earth, do we have them in the afterlife? Is there anger? Is there violence? Is there sadness in the other realm, whatever it may be? And. Uh, I think he knows that question is pretty difficult to answer too because if we're learning here as an experience then what is it for? 
how do we carry it on? What are we going to do with that experience? And if we're living in the ether without any animosity or sadness, then uh, you can see how, uh, what would be the point in it, you know? And this is why I have a problem with utopia or this perfect heaven idea, because it doesn't coincide with what we know as humans, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen or it doesn't exist, it just means that as humans we can't comprehend what it would be like to be in a realm of happiness eternally. It just doesn't make sense to a human. So the question still remains, can you bring, you know, what good is sadness, what good is anger? But uh, they're both good as humans, but when we're talking about moving, you know, learning something in this life from it, it makes it harder to really prove anything one way or another. And he mentioned asking Teal. Now this is where I kind of take a twist here. Um, Teal Swan, she does videos about spirituality and whatnot. She calls herself the spiritual catalyst, I think. I've been referred to her and recommended to her a few times, and I watched a bunch of her videos, hoping that I could get past her visual image that she portrays. This, this, um, how do I put it respectfully? She tries to, uh, she, she attracts people because she is a beautiful woman and she has very nice videos with good background. She's always looks nice. And that's great because if you want people to listen to you, you have to look nice at least to an extent, but I think that a lot more people get sucked in because of her beauty. And the comment section gets full of all these things like, I want to, you know, just just bad things, harsh things. So, I, uh, he said that she had experienced life as a spider, that she, she, she'd be a good one to ask because she's, she knows what it was like in this other realm. And the thing I was trying to explain was that even if that's true, she knows it as a human in another realm because if you're carrying that consciousness from your human life into say astral projection or whatever you're carrying those emotions with you it's part of your natural self so we can't experience life outside ourselves at least not at this point so does that mean that when you are gone and are in another realm if there's another realm do you experience that as a completely different entity I hope I'm conveying this right, but it's trying to reconcile humans with spirit, and we're totally different beings. <coughs> but really the question remains, how do we know who's telling us the truth? How do we know if they know that they have the truth? How do we know if they even know what they're talking about? I don't even know if I know what I'm talking about at the time. I think, I think the roundabout, the roundabout, uh, point I'm trying to make here is really that we can't seem to know anything for sure beyond this world, at least in the public mind. Um, it doesn't matter if 1% of the population understands what happens after they die, or if 1% of the population understands um, how to go about living a very spiritual, fulfilling life if it's only 1% of the people because that collective consciousness will never take hold and 99% will never believe the 1% regardless of who it is and it's because I guess it comes down to this if you told someone that you had very rewarding you have a job that's very rewarding but in order to have it be rewarding let's say like carpentry it's a great example, actually. I spent 20 years as a carpenter on and off until I fucked my back up. I can build just about anything. I can start from the ground up, do a foundation, a root, all the way to a roof. And every cabinet inside, I can do some furniture, not a whole lot, but the point is I can build just about anything I can imagine. Those skills didn't come easy. I started out doing concrete flat work framing buildings. started out roofing, actually, but worked my way down, I guess. But the point is that whenever I would bring something together, like a nice kitchen with cabinets and, 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 and a bookshelf and this stuff, um, the end result would be just absolutely beautiful. And I could see it because I worked towards being a finished carpenter. Whereas in years past, you know, everybody does the trudge work, you know, 
building, huffing, lumbering. Nobody really, uh, nobody really notices the framing of a building, that kind of stuff. So anyway, I worked up towards a point where, where I understood the business. I understood carpentry enough to just feel confident in what I believed I could do. And I think that spirituality is very similar. A person who, say, practices kundalini or uh, any type of practice, really, um, works their way up to a certain point. And another person steps in and says, I want to experience this, let's say. And the person says, you have to work for it. You know, it's just like a kid guy coming to me saying, show me how to build a cabinet. I'm like, no, you have to understand how a wood goes together. You have to understand how to cut. You have to understand how to put things in the right order. And life is the same way. I'm still trying to figure out how to put things in order in my life. It's a, it's a lifelong process, but in the meantime, let's, I guess let's just put it this way. You know, a lot of us have been, you know, are, are interested in life and answers, and, but to a degree, some of us, were, it's almost like we try to escape into what's going to happen after we die because this life is so damn hard sometimes. We need something to look forward to, you know. Think of death as the great vacation, you know. You're saving up your whole life. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, and for some people, death is just it. That's it. They die. And for some people, death is the beginning of an eternity. And, and, and I don't think we're ever going to be able to get past the differences in what that is. But really, the main point I'm trying to make here is that no matter what a person's personal experience was, uh, we can never be quite sure if it was legitimate if it was a real experience. If a person says that they were a spider, how do we know? If a person says that they astral travel, how do we know? I do believe in astral projection. I do believe in out-of-body experiences. Uh, in fact, <laughs> yeah, I've never had one myself, but I know loved ones who have. And uh, it can be very scary for somebody who's not prepared. So, anyway. I should probably finish this up. I guess after all that rambling, it's uh, really the essence and the, the root of this discussion, rather this lecture, if you will, um, don't want it to be that way, but uh, is that we are all in control of our own destinies, that we all have to make the choice to how we want to live. And no matter how much we impress our ideas upon others, or how much they may appear to follow or listen, Ultimately, we're alone in our own ideas. I've never met two people who have exactly the same ideas about what the world is like once they really dig down deep. And if you want to go into spirituality, it gets even worse and more confusing. The main root, the focus of what I'm trying to convey here is that no matter how much we try to tell others that we know what happens or we know what over here, or over there. No, no, there are always going to be people who won't listen. There will always be people who will just follow blindly without even questioning. You know, blind followers. And then there will always be the leaders who are too stubborn to admit even if you show it to them. So what we have to do is figure out how to take all these differences of what we think the universe is about and live together with them. Um, I know that people want to lash on to ideas about what happens after they die. I mean, that, it's really the root of a lot of my discussions because it's, it's a major component of life. Although this life is so much more important because it's the only one we know right now. In other words, I don't feel like I have to... If I could put this the, the, the best way, we come into this world and sometimes we're told that we have a spiritual responsibility to learn this or that so we can become this complete person and whole and then some people try to deny their emotions say we need to learn how to conquer anger conquer sadness total bullshit in my eyes we need to learn to live in this life not learn to conquer or abandon anything other than our own damage to others and the environment around us but those things aren't natural you see these these aren't things that we naturally we don't have a natural tendency to, to steal and rob and lie these are something that comes from not having or you know many different reasons or from brain chemistry, but um, we're never going to get everybody to see things our way. We're never going to get, uh, and we shouldn't. We wouldn't want to. We'd just be a bunch of drones. You know, it's it would be horrible to think that everybody believed the same religion or believe, had the same belief system. 
And I think that once we break it down and see that, it's so much better. Because I don't have to have one person telling me what the world's about. I can have 100 or 1,000. And then I can pick and choose the parts that make sense to me. Because that's all I can do as a human. I cannot sit and argue with a person about what's right and what's wrong, what's true, what's not. It, it's pointless. It makes absolutely no difference unless you're trying to defend your ego to say, I know, when you don't. Uh, for me, I'm much happier to just walk my path because I walk it alone. I have my family, I have my friends, but the path I walk is my path. I refuse to follow anyone's footsteps. Although I'd love to be one of the great thinkers in history, but uh, don't expect uh, don't expect much of that in today's age because even the uh, best thinkers don't get recognized. And I'm talking in my older years, not now. I'm way too scattered right now to be a thinker of history. But uh, you know, that's what I love to do. I love to think. I love to ask myself, not what are things, but if they are the way people are saying, why? And is that really make sense? Is that a good way to be, I guess, question reality? I used to wear a button that said that on my vest, question reality, when I was like 16. And I just remembered it like the other day. I do. I question reality and unreality. <laughs> it's a crazy world to live in, peeps. Anyway, take care and uh, just remember we're never going to see things the same. It's just a matter of wading through the details. I don't know if anyone's ever been a spider. I don't know what happens with my astral body. I can only live by my experience, and even that's subjective, so take care.